So hello everyone. Uh, before we start, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you at some point in your life have played game, maybe on PC or gaming console or mobile. But I wanted to know if anyone here ever played any competitive games like Valorant, Counter Strike, Fortnite. Yeah, that's good. So if you ever encountered a cheater in these competitive games, you know how painful it is to play against them. And so how do these hackers or cheaters uh, are destroying you and this gaming industry? So well, in this talk, I'll be sharing my game hacking experience and few techniques that these hackers might be using to out hack you all. And it's up to you what, how you want to make use of this knowledge. Uh, maybe you can make a private cheat for yourself because you know you just suck at gaming or maybe you want to earn a lot of money because uh, this uh, game cheating industry uh, is a multi-million dollar industry and you can sell these, sell these cheats. And also the skills that you learn in game hacking can be used in other fields like malware analysis, etc. So, and if you're wondering uh, what hardcore cheating looks like and how bad it is, uh, this is an example. It's basically a nightmare. So these hackers won't even let you spawn and as soon as you spawn, uh, boom, it's a headshot. So on the left, uh, we have Valorant, which is very famous for its uh, uh, strongest anti-cheat in the market. And on the right, we have Counter-Strike, which is also very popular for uh, one of the worst anti-cheat in the market. So it doesn't really matter how strong or how poor the anti-cheat is, the hackers are still gonna hack it. So a little intro about myself. I'm Rohan, my uh, handle is Nahorag. I do bug bounties, I'm founder at Defco Security, and I've participated in live hacking events. And uh, I also love playing games, of course, without cheats. So this is what we're going to cover. Uh, first, we'll uh, look at uh, history of cheats versus anti-cheats. Uh, then we're going to see some game hacking basics. Uh, we'll see kernel cheat, uh, then external hardware cheat. And we also see demo of both of them. So the history of game hacking. So one of the very first game was made in 1957 and it was a tennis game, but it wasn't available to anyone because it was in a library. Uh, so at that time, it was uh, gaming wasn't very popular, but it became popular in 1970s and 1980s uh, when gaming console and desktops uh, were introduced to the general public. And in 1980s, uh, modding of games started happening using command style hex, hex editors. And the first game bot was uh, made in 1995 for a game called Doom 2. But the thing started to heat up when popular multiplayer games uh, were released in early 2000. And with them, cheats were evolved and causing negative impact on the server. So you see when cheating was done on a single player games, it was at best impacting the uh, session of the hacker itself, not other people. But when these cheats uh, intro were introduced in multiplayer games, at that time, they were directly impacting the experience of everybody else in a negative manner. So that's when it became serious. And since the success of these games requires large and active user base, uh, the developers can let go of this. So the first anti-cheat was born in early 2000, and it was called Punk Buster. And then in 2002 came Valve anti-cheat, but these both were uh, user mode cheats. So initially they were very successful in stopping cheats, but uh, hacker discovered that uh, they can uh, load their, uh, their cheat in kernel and therefore they were able to bypass them. And here we are today with uh, uh, one of the popular kernel anti-cheats, uh, uh, which is easy anti-cheat, BattleEye and Vanguard. And, uh, they, they basically continuously monitor the, your activities on the system and the game and uh, basically try to stop the cheats from kernel itself. So now we can move to the basics. So initially when I started learning game hacking, I had to decide whether I should go with internal cheats or external cheats. So internal, as the name suggests, is uh, basically they are injected into the uh, game process itself. So therefore they have uh, 
good performance and they have huge flexibility in terms of providing new cheat functionalities. But uh, they were complex to make because uh, you need to be aware of uh, the engine or the uh, game language on which they are made because you are directly injecting the injecting into the game process so you need to be aware of their languages so also internal cheats in terms of anti cheats uh, have a very high uh, detection vectors and in an external uh, they have their own process and they are uh, manipulating the game process externally using some other program and because they are external their performance and flexibility is much lower than internal, but uh, it's enough for you to make basic hacks like wall hacks or aimbots. And therefore, they are easy to make because you can, they are external, you can make them in any language. And in terms of anti cheat, they have uh, lower detection vectors as compared to internal. So, what's the general methodology of bypassing a kernel anti cheat? So as you can see in this diagram, we have uh, the cheat in user mode, we have the game, and in kernel we have anti-cheat, which is supposed to protect the uh, game memory. So we are trying to read write from user mode, and as soon as we create a handle for reading writing, uh, the anti-cheat will detect it, and it will block the connection using object register callback. So how do we bypass this? So we also need to move to the kernel level itself. So basically we create the driver, we load it into, into the kernel and uh, send the instruction from user mode whether we want to read or write. So this way we are uh, basically able to uh, bypass the anti-cheat, but this doesn't mean that you won't be detected. So if you don't know what you are doing in the kernel, you are not clearing your traces, uh, uh, you, still, you can still get detected. So since we are moving into the kernel, there, the, there should be a lot of challenges that we are going to facing. The, so the first one is how you can create your own driver, how you can load your driver, whether you are even able to load your driver itself, and how you are able to communicate with the driver from user mode, and also how you can make your driver undetected. So now we can move to the kernel G development phase. So I've divided this whole kernel cheat development into five steps. And if you are able to crack these, uh, you should be able to make uh, a kernel drive for any game. So first one is reversing. So just like in pen testing, we do a reconnaissance for information gathering. Here we do reversing for finding the offsets of the game. And what are these offsets? I will tell you in the coming slides. Next, next is the communication part, which is here hooking, how you are able to, how you will be communicating with the driver, so you should be knowing that. Uh, next will be the creating the driver itself, based on the uh, communication part, which is hooking, you will be creating the driver. Next, how you will be loading the driver. And uh, the fifth one is uh, creating the user mode. So the first one, reversing. So the main point of reverse engineering is to finding the game offsets. So uh, there are two ways to reverse engineer. Uh, first one is debugger and second is dis disassembling. For, so for debugger, you can use cheat engine and for disassembling, you can use IDA or Ghidra. So I prefer to use, uh, I, I prefer to go with debugger or using cheat engine because for me, it was easy and convenient. Uh, with the uh, um, disassembling, we have, I have to first uh, deobfuscate the game binary because usually it's very uh, highly obfuscated. Uh, so and also to do that, I, I need to create a kernel driver for for dumping the memory, game binary, and um, also finding the offsets using disassembler. I need to be aware of uh, the language and the uh, gaming engine on which the game is made, whether it's Unreal or Unity. So all these restrictions are not present in cheat engine. I I don't need to defuscate. I need, I don't, and the game engine doesn't play a major role in it. So that's why I went with uh, cheat engine. So offsets, what are the offsets? So offset, basically, as the name suggests, suggests, it tells how far is something with respect to something. So we can see here that uh, A and B, B is 12 kilometer away. So uh, B offset is 12 kilometer. So, so why this offsets are important here? 
So let's say we launched the game and initially uh, it's, it gets loaded on this address and we need to reverse the uh, health inside this. So we reverse whatever like a cheat engine or so. We find that it's at uh, one, uh, it's, at, it's at this address. So next time we launch the game again, and again, if we try to uh, use that address for uh, reading writing that uh, health, we won't be able to uh, do that because every time the game launches, it will be loaded at different address. So the uh, variables inside it will also be loaded at different address. So instead of reverse engineering again and again, what we do is we find the offset of that address. So we find the offset of health, uh, how far is it away from the game base address. So game base address is very easy to find. We can use any Windows API for finding that. And if we are able to find the offset of health, uh, we, will, we can simply find, we don't need to reverse engineer again and again. So here, if you'll notice that on the first launch, uh, the health is three bytes away and all the sec second launch also health is three bytes away. So that's, so we can say that uh, uh, the health offset is three bytes away from the game base address. And if you don't want to uh, reverse engine in these offsets, just like me, if you are lazy, so you can use these resources. So any game that gets launches, even like yesterday and today also, you can uh, get these offset. So people used to usually uh, do that stuff for you. So th these are the websites where you can find these offset if you don't want to reverse engineer. So next come the hooking part, basically the communication. You, let's say you made the driver, how are you going to communicate with that? So generally when you, uh, when you make your own driver, you can't actually use, uh, communicate with it. So what we are going to do is, uh, we're going to do hooking which provides a communication part to it. What hooking is, is basically uh, we hijack a system call. So we can call the system calls and uh, we tell it like, hey, I'm, I want this instruction to be sent to my driver in the kernel. And so system call will say like, I don't have any functionality to that. So we will also provide the uh, functionality, basically this op code, something like this, that like move racks and the address of our cheat driver. And we're going to jump to that. So basically we are, uh, this op code we will be injecting into the system call and since we are able to system able to call the system call, uh, it will be transferring to a cheat driver. So here I have an example of this. So let's say uh, we have our uh, uh, user mode and in the kernel we have the driver itself and we are trying to communicate here but we can't actually do that. So first we find uh, Windows, any Windows driver which you want. Let's say uh, uh, here in example, we are using the XD kernel, which is a direct, direct F driver. Next, uh, we're going to uh, find any system call in that, which we can uh, use for hijacking. Let's say we find this system call NTOPAM. And in that we will be injecting this op code. So as you can see in the user mode, now we are calling the system call. And in system call, uh, using that op code, we, we are transferring it to our driver. So this is what basically hooking is. So till now we have seen uh, reverse engineering offsets and we have seen the combination part. So what else our driver need to do? So uh, let me duplicate this. So our, uh, our cheat driver needs to do basically four things. First, uh, it needs to find the system call address. Like in previous slide, I showed you this NT open. First, you need to find the address where it's located. Next, it needs to do the hooking part, basically placing the uh, shell code like I showed you here, uh, this uh, move racks, jump racks. Third, it needs to also have a hook handler. So like. Um, basically, we are sending uh, read instruction, write instruction, so it needs to handle those instructions as well. And the fourth is uh, clearing the traces. So let me show you uh, briefly like how this uh, code looks like. So just like in C++, we have a void main for uh, the entry where, where whenever we uh, launch the program, it goes there. So here we have driver entry. So it first it goes there and we uh, there is a call kernel function. 
Mm, so here we are finding the address of uh, the system call. Uh, this is the driver which is direct us. This is the system call. And here we are preparing the instructions for that, uh, for the, basically the opcode move rex and jump rex. And we are uh, injecting that using uh, uh, this function. The, this function is basically a wrapper of, of uh, many other things. So I'll be sharing this code to you. So you can like uh, go through it at the end. And uh, in some of the uh, function insights are undocumented. So uh, you won't be able to find that on Google, but nowadays uh, we have chat GPT, so you can use that as well for understanding this code. And uh, this is the hook handler. Basically, uh, like if you want to uh, read the base address of the game, or uh, if we are sending a write instruction, so it will do the write part, read part. So let me show you in uh, VM how it uh, works in the backend. So this is the uh, driver which I've already made, and this is uh, basically a KD mapper which will be used for uh, loading our driver. Uh, so I'll open this uh, Windows debugger. Live demo doesn't work. But I have a video. Yeah, so this is the driver and this is the KD mapper which will load the driver. Uh, so first we'll be uh, doing the kernel debugging, local kernel debugging. And we're going to reload the uh, DirectX driver which we are targeting here. Uh, now we can move to the disassembly part where so we will be seeing uh, how this uh, op code is will, is will be injected into uh, the system call. So first we'll search and uh, I want you to notice the first two uh, uh, instructions here. And we will be changing the instruction, basically injecting our own move racks, jump racks. So we, uh, we load the driver using KD mapper. I'll also have a slide for KD mapper to show you how it works. And if we just uh, remove a character and again enter it for refreshing. Yeah, so we can see our first, uh, the op code which we are injecting, move racks, jump racks, is being injected here. And this is the address of the driver, uh, which are, which where, where it's loaded. We can also search this address here uh, to see the assembly code of our driver. So this is how hooking works at the backend. So this is the most important slide in here. So basically, uh, how you can hide your driver here. So first is you need to find your own hook function. Basically the system call which we are targeting, like here we were targeting NT open composition surface. So this one is very uh, known, is very publicly known to the NT cheat itself. So you need to uh, find your own system call. Maybe you can find it, some different system call in DirectX driver or some other drivers. And the second is the shell code here. Like we were using move racks, jump racks. This is also very uh, widely known by NTG developers. So basically you also need to find some new uh, uh, shell code that uh, basically does the same thing, but so that 
you can bypass the signatures that uh, that are being made by the anti cheat so the next thing is how you can load your driver so there are three ways the first is test mode uh, in which uh, you go into the test mode of the windows and there you can test your drivers but uh, this doesn't work uh, with the uh, anti cheat because uh, they check whether your windows is, is in test mode and if it is they won't let you launch the game so the second way is to uh, find is to uh, get your uh, driver officially signed by microsoft by paying them but this also is uh, very uh, not good like uh, if your driver gets rejected uh, they will revoke your driver and your money will be wasted so what uh, hackers are doing is they are basically exploiting officially signed drivers finding vulnerabilities in them and using those to load our driver so like i showed you kd mapper in that video uh, basically kd mapper what does is there is a vulnerability in an intel driver which is this one and it basically helps you to manually map your own unofficial signed driver into the kernel memory and it and this kd mapper also take care of uh, clearing traces of your driver like uh, these uh, mm 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 and load driver table and pdb cache table it it also clear those as well uh, and also if you want to use some other drivers other uh, other uh, like other vulnerable drivers you can find those here as, as well so the last part is user mode which is basically very easy all you need to do here is calling the hook function and uh, and then you need to prepare these instruction like whatever you want to read or write and uh, handle the cheat logic part whatever like aimbot or esp you are making uh, you need to handle that as well uh, so i have a demo which i made for apex legends uh, this is basically a wall hack uh, so like uh, i find the offset of uh, how you can enable glow on the enemy so in in this game there is a uh character like bloodhound which has the ability to reveal enemies for certain second so using that you find the game offset of that and you just uh using your driver you enable that part so currently i have already loaded the driver I'll, i'll just simply run my user mode and those red ones are the enemies Yeah. So now we can move to the external hardware cheat. So uh, in this uh, uh, we will be using Pixelbot. So like whatever I showed you earlier, uh, there was uh, uh, like those kernel cheats weren't working for. Uh, the Valorant game itself, because in Valorant uh, the anti cheat loads uh, whenever your system boots. So I wasn't able to find a way to bypass that. So I found some other means of chill hacking in Valorant. So one of the ways is using Pixel Bot, which are basically color based inbots. So uh, in these games, uh, there is a functionality using which you can enable uh, enemy outlines. So like we have a screenshot. so we can see like there is red yellow, uh, yellow and purple and we can use this functionality to create a program that will find uh, enemy on the screen and it will uh, automatically aim at that player so how do these work is basically there are three things here it first uh, find the find the it first capture the screen you can use like python libraries or you can use obs as well uh then it uh, finds the enemy basically using uh color filtering and then it needs to move the mouse to that enemy so like here we are seeing uh the valorant is projecting on a monitor and pixel bot is basically reading uh from the monitor so the benefit here is that we aren't we aren't interacting with the game memory we are we aren't touching the game memory itself so that's why uh these pixel bots are very uh hard to detect by the anti cheat and they are easy to make and almost works on any game that have this functionality of enemy highlighting and 
uh, it depends on the code of uh, the logic of your aimbot. Uh, the, the better the aimbot logic is, uh, the better will be uh, the enemy uh, finding part. So the tools which will be required are uh, Arduino Leonardo and USB host shield. And you need to uh, uh, solder these like uh, green ones for uh, getting the power to your mouse. And you might be wondering why we are needing these external tools. Like if I go to previous slide, for capturing pixels, uh, we can do that uh, from any library or OBS. For enemy finding, that's again a simple logic. But for mouse movement, uh, this is uh, what is concerning for anti-cheat. Like uh, how, why you are moving a mouse virtually. For if, so if you are making the code for moving mouse in the same system on which a Valorant is running, it's, it's gonna be able to detect it. So that's why we will be using any external device for uh, simulating the mouse movements. So initially people uh, were used to do uh, mouse movement using uh, some libraries and later they started using external device. So I'll show you like initially what used to work and how we are and, and what's work currently working. So like I have here made uh, pixel bot gen one mouse movement. So initially people used to use these like libraries here we have for uh, moving the mouse like Python libraries or C++ libraries. And some of these uh, still work for some other games like Overwatch. But for Valorant, these, uh, they both are not working. Next, people started using external drivers. So like here, internal interception driver, the very first one, this one became very popular. Uh, so people were using that for simulating mouse movement. People were also using uh, Razer Logitech drivers for using uh, mouse movement and also this Chinese driver which also got famous for externally moving. But later uh, Valorant came to know about these and they simply blocked it. So the Gen 3 is where uh, uh, good things started happening. Like uh, we found out that Arduino also has mouse movement libraries. So the good thing here is the mouse movement, mouse movement part is coming externally from some other device instead of internal. So the Valorant itself doesn't know whether these uh, mouse movement are actually coming from uh, a real mouse or is it a simulated mouse movement. So these were used to work for a long time, but uh, uh, one of the ways which Valorant found out about these is, uh, we can see here we are using two mouse, the original one and the second mouse. So the Valorant can question like, why, uh, why are there two mouse connected to the system? So they basically block the second mouse. So this also doesn't work anymore. And this is uh, this is like show you if you are using a second mouse. So using this, they can detect your second mouse. So initially they were uh, basically, uh, they blocked the mouse, but on a physical level, like on higher level, but they forgot to block it on lower level, like virtualize or something. So people started using Hyper-V, which is a Windows uh, uh, virtual technology to simulate a second mouse. But they also uh, got patched, I think in August 22, the, this combination of Arduino and hypervisor got patched. So this is where currently we are now, this is this thing is currently working for Valorant. Uh, basically what we are doing is uh, we have Arduino, we have a USB host shield. Uh, we connect our real mouse to the USB host shield, uh, which is connected to Arduino and Arduino is connected to PC. So this whole setup is like a single mouse. And uh, using this setup, we can uh, simulate a mouse movement and also control a real mouse. Uh, so in the coming slide, I'll show you how. And this is how it looks like. If you are able to spoof the Arduino and Arduino, uh, it will look like uh, only single mouse is connected. So here we have to think the pixel bot code and the Arduino code. So the pixel bot code needs to uh, do basically four things. First, it capture the pixel on the screen, then it do the color filtering, uh, then it calculate coordinates like where is the enemy, and then it send the coordinates to the Arduino. So let me show you this uh, Ardi, uh, pixel bot code. Uh, this is a very simple Python code. So like we have the libraries, and when we are, uh, we are using a serial communication method for sending the coordinates to the Arduino. We are uh, initializing some variables. And these are the HSV, the color value, the color filtering values for purple color of enemy. 
So as soon as we uh, click the left mouse, it will uh, capture the screen and find the enemy. This is the uh, aimbot, very simple logic, and it will send the uh, S X or Y coordinates to this function. And we, we need to convert these X and Y uh, to an unsigned integer because we can't send signed integers or like negative value through Arduino, through this COM port. So we need to convert this to unsigned and then we will send this to our uh, Arduino where we'll be uh, doing the mouse movement part. So one of the challenges in this is uh, finding the correct HSV value. Like here we have screenshot and we can see the purple color in background. So imagine if there is enemy also and it has a purple outline. So uh, we shouldn't be like aiming on these trees instead of uh, the enemy itself. So for that you need to uh, filter uh, like the very best range for your respective color. So you can use uh, OpenCV in Python or something like we have here behind Astra wall which is purple and in front we have uh, enemies and both of our purple but if we have find a, a good HSV range uh, we can like see in below screenshot we are able to filter out the enemies and this is the very basic code of OpenCV which you can uh, use for finding uh, the perfect HSV range. So the Arduino code uh, mm, needs to do three things. It first takes the coordinates from our Python code. It simulates the mouse movement and it also needs to simulate mouse movement of a real mouse. So let me show you its code. Uh, we have a libraries and these are some of the global variable which are uh, which will be used for simulating the real mouse. Uh, we have a mouse parser class uh, which is basically uh, passing the inputs from our real mouse itself. And this is a set of function which is a mandatory and it only runs one time here we are initializing uh, some of the objects. And this is a loop function is also mandatory and it continuously loops whenever you uh, connect your Arduino. So this logic is for simulating our real mouse. And this is the logic for uh, uh, simulating the coordinates which are coming from uh, the Python code. So whenever there is any available in any available data in the serial port, it will read it uh, X and Y and it will again convert it to signed integer because we are sending unsigned on the communication part and then it will simply move the mouse. So uh, as I showed you in this, uh, uh, we were using a serial communication part for communicating uh, to the Arduino, but we can, also, we can also use some other method like a web server or a wireless transmitter. So why, why am I uh, showing you this is because uh, Vanguard, which is the anti-cheat for Valorant, is actually monitoring the uh, uh, serial COM port. So that doesn't mean that you can't use this. You can still use it. You can use it. Basically, you need to um, make uh, the data which you are sending to be unique uh, so that they can't make a signature for it. So like you can, uh, X, like the X and Y, you can put some garbage value in the prefix part and uh, in the postfix part. Also you can do, what you can do is uh, spoof your Arduino. So this is a very uh, basic spoofing method which you can use. So this is a file like uh, uh, this uh, Arduino boards file. You can open it and uh, change the Leonardo name to whatever your mouse is. And you need to also change the VID and vendor ID, product ID, which, which you can get from uh, this uh, URL. And so this way you can, bas uh, a, a basic simple spoof method you can use. Um, if you don't use it, uh, and whenever you connect to Arduino, it will show on your system that Arduino Leonardo is connected. And I won't say whether this basic thing is uh, sufficient for Valorant, uh, you need to experiment on your own. So I have uh, uh, two videos for Valorant, which shows the So this is directly recording the uh, Valorant and we are uh, basically simply clicking and it, it is automatically 
uh, aiming at the enemy head. And I have another video which shows the setup as well. So we, uh, I'm just simply holding the mouse, I'll simply click it and the mouse is connected uh, to the USB host shield which is connected to the Arduino and Arduino is connected to the PC and I'll simply uh, click my mouse and it will automatically like move it to the enemy head. And now it actually moved out of the field of view, so I'm adjusting my mouse. Well, so, so, uh, so uh, what Valran can do in this case is uh, recently uh, uh, they made a patch uh, where they introduced a functionality to hide. Uh, the enemy outlines itself. So I am suspecting that in future they will uh, completely remove the enemy outlines because that's one of the ways in which uh, they can counter it because if there is no way of finding various enemies, uh, there is no way of uh, moving the mouse to them. But uh, there is actually a project which is uh, which you can find on unknown cheats which is using uh, artificial intelligence to find the uh, enemy on the screen like uh, if you have enough data sets for it uh, you can use this for uh, simulating mouse movement and finding the enemy uh, and this is uh, where I'll be releasing the kernel driver and the Arduino code itself and these are the references which have been making of uh, this presentation and the conclusion part and we're done. So if we have any questions, yeah. Sorry, I can't hear you. Mobile gaming. Uh, I haven't tested it. Uh, I don't have any experience in mobile gaming. Uh, he was asking whether we can do this, all this in mobile gamings. Okay, thank you guys.